electronic reproduction has helped to make pop music popular and it's turned it into a highly profitable industry in the process. But for the music business now, audio technology is in danger of turning into a Frankenstein's monster. That which gave is now starting to take away. Easy Access has finally raised the question, whose music is it anyway? Rock music has always been a folk art and authorship is often hard to define. Generations of guitarists have liberally helped themselves to snatches of Chuck Berry's guitar lines and raided a common store of chords and rhythms. Today the same principle has been given an added twist. A rap DJ like Derek B also borrows snatches from other people's songs, but he takes them directly off records. In this modern version, the DJ has himself assumed, and some would say usurped, the role of the artist. I'll use anything between four and five different sounds from the different records to create it in, in plus my own sound. You know, little stabs and little samples here and there to um, enhance the sound. You're in dodgy water all the way. You know, but you have to do it to enhance your music because that's your musical form. If you watered it down, it would not be that anymore. You know, if you if I got like three voiceover specialists to come in and scream like James Brown and and like another guy to come in and you know a live drummer and took like a month over, you know, setting up his drums and trying to get that old sort of sound, it, it, the whole point of the thing wouldn't it wouldn't be worth it. You know. The use of recordings themselves as instruments started with the technique of scratching developed by New York disc jockeys. It's one of the cornerstones of Derek B's act. You need a key near, you need um, a knowledge of music, vast knowledge of, of music. You need to, to have been around in some, you need to have been a DJ for a while to be able to um, understand, you know, like keys clash and all that. You've still got to be thinking like, like a musician, but um, in some ways. But um, you can be a bit more flexible and you need to have a good air, you need to have a good collection of records basically and a good collection of, you know, and I've got a great collection. Like, yeah. <laughs> a far cry from Derek B's DIY approach is this professional sampling machine. It can be controlled by computer to play sequences of digitally recorded snippets. If you think you can hear something like the voice of soul singer James Brown in this sound soup, you're not mistaken. This software package has been cleared for copyright. The real problems arise when samples are used without consent and without payment. This record was a recent number one hit in Britain for Mars. The song has been constructed along similar lines to the video that goes with it. It's made up of fragments sampled from eight or nine other records, all without permission. Even the title is lifted from a rap duo who are themselves notorious samplers. The only legal action taken against Mars so far has come from the hit factory of Stock Aitken Waterman. One of Mars' smaller borrowings was taken from their hit song Roadblock, and Pete Waterman won't stand for it. The piece that everybody's using off Roadblock is the intro which obviously is one of the most important parts of a record because it introduces a record. And on Roadblock, we used a girl called uh, Coral Gordon and she did a little scream that we put on the start. And it makes the start of Roadblock very distinctive. So I'll play you the start of Roadblock. It includes Coral, a saxophone player, and a lot of party noises, which of course, we, we, which is what Roadblock was about. So this is this. That's Roadblock, right? And just as you've come in here this morning, we get this, mixed by a Radio 1 disc jockey. It's the Walk the Dinosaur remix. And spot the similarity. Uh, got a bit of... Oh, sorry about that. A bit of fluff on the needle. The and the second sample is from another record called Put the Needle on the Record by an, a New York DJ, Gail Sky King. How do you distinguish between this kind of what you call theft and the sort of theft that goes on routinely in rock music whereby a Chuck Berry riff, for instance, you know, Dan Anna. No, that's not, no, 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 be very careful. That's plagiarism. There's a difference between stealing and plagiarism. 
There would be no rock and roll industry if it wasn't for plagiarism. Because we all have to borrow somebody else's ideas. The art is not making it close to the idea you've used. I mean, you know, the Beatles thought they were writing Buddy Holly songs, Buddy Holly thought he was writing Bill Ailey songs or whatever. It's all an evolution. That's called plagiarism. It isn't stealing. You have to be talented to play the notes on the guitar like Chuck Berry did and then work out how to make it not sound like Chuck Berry. That's different. That's called plagiarism. But when you take a record, you sample it straight into a machine. That's not, that's not plagiarism. That is theft. You're copying. Andy Warhol made a career out of the multiple sampling of other people's images. Campbell's soup tins, photographs of Marilyn Monroe, pop art. It's a self-conscious notion of the artist as part consumer, part originator, that pop music has now stumbled upon for itself. And this self-consciousness has been fueled by the near-perfect recall of modern technology. On the question of copyright, the record industry has been content to fight rearguard actions against a different bogeyman, the home taper. But the government in its new copyright bill has rejected their demand for a levy on blank tape. Meanwhile, the imminent arrival of digital audio tape has been hysterically greeted with a demand that the system be spiked with a spoiling device to prevent the cloning of compact discs. The implications of sampling, however, have passed both the industry and government by. Copyright is breached only when what's called a substantial part of a piece of music is stolen. But for a sampler, a few seconds is all it takes. Some people say I borrow beats, some think it's a crime. My DJ cuts them up to enhance my rhyme. But it's part of the art of this new music sound. Without them, there won't be none around. Yeah! yeah!